of our training. Today we have our weapons test. Private Ivan, you're first. Step forward. Draw your weapon and show me one of your many offensive moves. Ow! That hurt. I don't think I remember how to use it. I didn't know we would be having it tested. Haven't you been practicing? Well, no. I haven't been in a real battle yet, so I didn't need it. <clears throat> what? You can't wait for a battle to have your armor on or to know how to use your weapon. Private JB, how do you draw your sword safely? Very good. And why are we careful not to let it hit the ground? It would draw a sword and wouldn't be effective in the fight. Private Stacy, what are important things we do to care for our sword? We need to check in on it every day, sharpen it if we have been using it and practice with it so we remember the attack maneuvers we have learned. Very good. Private right. Why do we need a sword? Even with all our armor to protect us in a battle, without a sword, we can't fight. We don't want to just think about safety, but also think about defeating the enemy and winning battles. But what does that ha this have to do with any spiritual armor we have been talking about? Very good question. The Bible is our sword. We need to learn how to handle it, practice with it daily, and fight our enemy Satan with it. First, you have to learn to draw your sword by learning the, to find the verses in the Bible. Then we need to learn how to read it daily to learn what God's told us so we can tell the truth and know how to obey God. Then, we need to learn how to apply it to things that happen in our life. One way is to memorize verses that tell us what to do when tempted. Like if we are tempted to be mean, we can remember Ephesians 4.32. Be kind and compassionate to one another. That is how we attack Satan and win the battle. I guess I better get busy and prepare for action. Very, very good soldiers. We must have our swords ready and we must practice so we can we get sick! Dismissed! Morning, guys. It's good to see you again. Um, we are almost at the end of the Armor of God series. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, we have today, and then we have next week, we have Miss Candy doing the last lesson. Um, I did want to let you know that we have already started some really fun plans for Thanksgiving for Thanksgiving and for Christmas lessons. So we're not over when the Emmer of God is over. Keep watching and keep listening because we have some really fun things planned. So, okay, well, let's get started with our lesson. We're going to start with a review. We're going to pull out our soldiers. If you have your soldiers nearby, pull them out. And we're just going to dress them quickly. We're going to do that as a review and also just to cover up this poor soldier who has no armor on. If you remember right, we started with the belt of truth. Miss Ray told us about the belt of truth. And then we went with the breastplate of righteousness. And that was Miss Karen teaching us. I'm not going to go over them today because next week and the week after we're going to review them a little bit. But we're just going to go over the names of them right now. And then we went over the shoes that carried the gospel of peace. And then we had the helmet of salvation that Miss Sonia shared with us. And then we have the shield of faith, which I talked about a couple of weeks ago. Um, and how we could move that shield of faith to cover whatever part of our body was, be, was vulnerable, right? Was able to be attacked. So, looking at this, what parts of the body are not covered? There are a few, aren't there? 
There's a little bit of an arm and some neck and some face. But what else is covered? For the most part, the important parts are covered, aren't they? Um, we're going to talk about that today, what's exposed and how we're going to protect that. Now I want you to open up the baggie and you're going to find the one last piece that's in there and that is the sword. I'm going to put the sword in my soldier's hand. Okay, so this is the sword. We're going to talk about what is the sword? What is its significance? Why is it important? Who do we fight with it? There's a lot of questions and I'm hoping we can answer them today. So I'm going to move Mr. Soldier out of the way and I'm going to have you open your Bibles to our verse of the month, uh, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6. And we're only going to read one verse today. Um, so go ahead and pull out your Bibles. Remember, Miss Kelly gave you a little tag. You should have a little tag on your Bible that will help you find it. Okay, Ephesians 6, 17. It says, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So, you've probably figured out by now that we're going to be talking about the sword of the Spirit. The sword of the Spirit is the Word of God, which we know, another name for that, is our Bible, right? The Bible teaches us who God is, and it teaches us what God wants us to know about Him. Now, is the Bible just any book, like any other book on your bookshelf at home? No, it's not, is it? What makes the Bible different? Okay, I'm going to give you a hint. Somebody very special wrote the Bible. God. God is the author of the Bible. God wrote the Bible. And you're probably thinking, how did God write the Bible? Well, I'll tell you what he did. He found very special men, and he talked to them, and he told them what to write down. So he wrote the Bible through men. Okay, so that's very important to remember. And that is one of the most important ways that God talks to us, is through the Bible. So, we need to remember, in our armor, the sword of the Spirit is attached to the belt of truth, right? Now, the sword is the, yeah, is the only piece of armor that is not just for protection, but it's also for fighting. Thank you, Ms. Kelly. This one's not decorated yet, but it gives you an idea. It's not just for protecting, but it's also for fighting. You can use it to fight off an enemy or even to attack an enemy. Um, who is our enemy? That's a good question. But I think you guys all know the answer. Our enemy is Satan, right? So this is the one piece of armor that we can actually fight the enemy with. And we're going to learn how to do that today. It's going to be really fun. So the Bible, our sword, it's very powerful. And if we use it with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can really, it's a very, very, very powerful. Okay, pull out your Bible again, and we're going to go to 2 Timothy. Okay, 2 Timothy uh, 3, 16. And I'm going to read this verse, and we're going to talk about the different ways that the Bible can help. So 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture, which is the Bible, is God-breathed, and it's useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, and for training in righteousness. So according to 2 Timothy, the Bible teaches us, and it rebukes us. Now rebuking is kind of a fancy name for saying it reminds us of the things we shouldn't do. Okay? It corrects us when we do wrong things. It shows us why, we, why it was wrong and how to make it right. And then the Bible also trains us. It trains us how to live in a way that helps us have peace with God and makes God happy. Okay, now I want to go back, you guys. I want you to remember back before COVID when we would meet every Sunday morning down in the fellowship hall. And I want you to think back and remember all of the wonderful stories that we read together, true stories from the Bible, 
true stories about Jesus, about miracles that he did when he lived here on earth, and how he taught people and how he loved people, the good things he did, but more importantly, how he died, and then how he came back to life. That was one of the things, the last things we did was together before we had to go home for COVID. So the Bible is so important to us as Christians. So, so important. Okay, we're going to go back for a minute and talk about the breastplate of righteousness. Remember how that covered our chests, covers our heart and our lungs and our stomachs, all the things that help our body work. Um, do you remember what righteousness is? Righteousness is being right with God. Okay, now, that's where the helmet of salvation comes in. If we are Christians and we're wearing that helmet of salvation, we wear it, right? Okay, I'm going to put it on. Did you guys make these? Woo -hoo -hoo. Okay, might as well have my whole thing here. If we have, if you have your helmet, put it on so you can join me. So if we're Christians, then we wear the helmet of salvation, right? Let's review salvation just for a minute. If we believe that Jesus is God, if we believe that he is the one real true God, and if we repent, which means if we turn away from our sins and we choose to follow Christ, then he becomes our Heavenly Father. And he takes away our sins. Okay, I'm taking this off because this is driving me crazy. But yes, he takes away our sins. Now, how does he do that? How does he take away our sins? This is really important. Jesus, he took every single bad thing that any of us ever did or said, and he put them on himself. That means he made it like he did every single one of those bad things. It was like he took all of those and he said, I did those. And you know what he did? He took the blame for them. He took the punishment for every sin that anyone ever did. And you remember we talked about how he was beaten and how he was killed and how he died with so much sin on him. Now, did he sin? No. He, didn't ever, he never sinned. So the sin that he died with on his body and in his soul was sin that we did. But did he stay dead? No. He rose again. He came back to life. And by doing that, he conquered death. And he also conquered sin. And we need to remember that. That is salvation. If we believe that, then we are God's children. Okay, now, I want to remind you of something else. God, God the Father, God the Father is perfect. And he hates sin. But, because Jesus took all of our sins, when God looks at us, does he see our sin? No, he doesn't. You know what he sees? He, he looks at us and it looks like we're perfect and we're holy because we don't have those sins anymore. And because of that, do we ever have to worry about where we're going to go when we die? No. We don't have to worry about whether or not we'll make it into heaven. When we believe Jesus and we ask him to forgive us, we put on our helmet of salvation. So we are God's children. We are going to spend forever and ever in heaven with him. And who else is going to be up there? Anyone else who ever loved Jesus and who has given themselves to him. So there's going to be a lot of people that we love up in heaven. Okay, so we're going to read another verse. I want you guys to turn to Hebrews. Now Hebrews is almost at the very, very end of the Bible. And you're going to go to the book of Hebrews. Chapter 4, and it's verse 12, and we're only going to read part of the verse. For the word of God, the Bible, is living and active, and it is sharper than any two-edged sword. Okay, so remember, a sword is a weapon, right? Now, we're not going to use our Bibles like a weapon to beat people over the head. You need to believe this. That's not what God means. God doesn't mean that. He means that we should understand what is in here, and we should be able to talk to people about it. We should be able to defend our faith. We should be able to share our faith and tell people why we have peace and why we have victory. That's, that's what God means. 
So, practice using your sword, right? Just like a soldier would have to practice using his sword. So if someone came at him, he would know how to fight with that. We have to practice using our swords. How are we going to do that? Well, as you get older, I want you to read it. You need to read it and you need to learn it. And you need to know it so well that when the enemy attacks you, you can use God's word to send him running. Remember, does he have any power over us? No, none. Okay, so I'm going to end with a wonderful example of how God's word can be used as a sword to fight Satan. Okay, so we're going to have to pretend for a minute. I want you all to pretend really hard. Okay, although this is probably, most of us can pretend this. I want you to pretend that you did something bad. Okay, not just a little bad, really, really bad. I'm not even going to tell you what, but think of something that would just be a horrible thing to do. And it might even be so bad that you're afraid that maybe you can't ever get forgiven. Maybe your parents couldn't forgive you, or your brothers or sisters or a friend, that is when Satan comes around. Satan will come to you and he'll sneak into your brain. And you know what he'll say? I'm going to pretend he's talking to me. He'll say, Marion, what you did was horrible and it's unforgivable and God can never forgive you and you can never go to heaven. God doesn't want you in heaven. That's, that's a pretty horrible, scary thought. But you know what? There are verses in the Bible we can pull out like a sword. And this is the verse I want you to pull out. Get your Bible, and we're going to go to the book of John. John is my favorite book in the Bible, just in case any of you wondered. I love John. We're going to go to John 10, chapter 10, verses 27 and 28. Now, this is Jesus talking, and he's talking about us. He's talking to people about people that love him. And Jesus says, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. And no one can snatch them out of my hand. So, there's something I want you to remember, if you remember nothing else. You need to remember that Jesus, Jesus is our shepherd. So if he's our shepherd, what does that make us? makes us sheep, right? He takes care of us, and he loves us, and he protects us. So can anyone take us away from Jesus if we're his child? No. No. And you can scream that. No. Nobody can take us away from Jesus. And nobody can make Jesus not love us. Nothing you can do can make Jesus not love you. Isn't that exciting? It's amazing. So, once we give ourselves to God, we belong to Him. No one can ever, ever take us away. So, I want you to practice sword drills. I want you to practice knowing the Word. I want you to, to know truths that will help you have strength. Okay, now we're going to have fun with our real sword, or with our toy swords too, in just a minute. But let's just take a minute to pray. And then Miss Judy is going to come and she's going to work with you on the craft. Okie doke. Father in heaven, you have given us everything we need to live victoriously. Help us to remember that we are covered completely with an armor that would protect us from anything that could hurt us. Thank you that you walk with us and that you love us and that you're even holding us in your hand and that nobody can take us away from you. I pray, Lord, that every single person that's listening to this will find you, that they will know you and that they will love you and that they will give their hearts to you. Um, I pray that there will be a day very soon that we can all be together again, learning and laughing and being together and having fun. I thank you so much for your love, which is perfect, just like you are, in Jesus' name. Okay, Miss Jude's going to be joining you, and you are going to decorate your sword. So go ahead and pull that out of your bag. There should be one more craft for next week that Miss Candy's going to do with you. Um, 
But go ahead and pull those out. You should have a sword and you should have a little baggie of jewels. Okay, I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye. Hi, boys and girls. It's Miss Jude. I'm glad to be with you this morning. And we are on Lesson 7. We have completed our man. And today, we are our craft is going to be the Sword of the Spirit. Because that's what Miss Marion showed us or told us about this morning was the Sword of the Spirit. So this is our craft. Now I want you to take your bag that shows Lesson 7 and get out your sword and your bag of gems. And if you have a glue stick, that works very, very well. And most of you, I'm sure, have a glue stick. Now this is craft is not going to take very long, so get everything ready, and here we go. All right, we all have our craft. You've got your sword. Now we have to put the hilt on the sword. So you all have your blue piece of foam, and there is a slit in it. So if you take your blue piece of foam, and put it right in the slit and take it up to where it kind of curves. Look at that, and it holds right there. There is our sword. Now comes the fun part. Take your glue stick and empty out all the gems that we put in the bag for you, all the pretty gems. Now this is going to be completely up to you. So take a gem Put a little bit of glue on it and stick it on your sword wherever you want to. Now everybody has a couple fun ones, so there's a great big circle. I'm going to put him right on top. Look at that. See? Now just keep taking your gems, putting a little bit of glue on them, and stick it on your sword. Isn't this going to be fun? And it's going to be very, very pretty. And you know what it's going to go with? Do you remember when Miss Marion did your shield? Well, now you've got your decorated shield. And now you have your sword also. So you're going to be all set. Okay. Hi, <laughs> guys. I hope you enjoyed uh, decorating your sword with with Miss Jude. Um, I said this before, but I'm going to say it again. We would love pictures. We would love pictures of you guys decked out in your uniform, in your armor. I'd love to see pictures of how you decorated your shield and your sword. So if you think about it, have your mom or dad take a picture and email it to maybe Pastor Dan or to me, and we will make sure that people get to see it. So next week we have one more lesson. Um, on the armor of God and then after that we will start in the fun festive Thanksgiving and Christmas stuff so we are so excited to start um, a new series and um, just remember how loved you are and how missed you are okay God bless and we'll see you next week bye bye